Hey everyone, this is the first C Sharp uh, scripting example video. Um, I'm going to be doing a series of these, and you can request different examples if you like, and I'm going to try to explain different aspects of C Sharp as I go through some of these examples. Um, yeah, so if you have any questions, put them in the comments. Um, we're pretty much just going to be building stuff. Um, the first request that I actually received was from one of the viewers, his name's John Sarton. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, and so what we're, what he requested is that uh, I make a landmine. So there's a car that's traveling and it collides with an object and that triggers an explosion. So that's essentially what we're trying to do here. So I set up the scene as an example to show you what we're going to build. Um, I have this landmine game object, it's just a cube, uh, and when the car hits it, or collides with it, it's going to cause an explosion, and then it's going to destroy itself. So let's just go ahead and see what that looks like. See it destroys itself from the hierarchy, and that's what we're going to build. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get started. What we're using is Sample Assets Beta, you can download this for free from the Unity Asset Store. Um, Everything that you need to do is in this package, and we'll walk through where everything is. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open the sample scenes folder, uh, open the scenes folder, and we're using the car scene. Um, I'm going to delete the script because we're going to write it from scratch. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a cube. This will be our landmine. Go ahead and place it in front of the car. We can call it landmine. We're going to be using a trigger uh, for this, so set the box collider to is trigger. So that means when two colliders uh, touch each other, um, there's going to be a trigger, and that's what the script is going to use. Uh, so the next thing we need to do is create the script. Uh, go ahead and create a C sharp script. We're going to name it landmine. And then we can go ahead and just add this landmine script to our landmine game object. And now we can go ahead and we can open our script and we can start writing it. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a variable um, to hold our explosion. So we want this to be public. That way we can see it in the inspector. Um, the explosion is just going to be a game object. That's the type of variable that this is. And the name is just going to be explosion. Uh, explosion prefab. Um, so one thing to note, um, I'm just going to try to talk about certain C-sharp things as I write scripts for this. So when we name our C-sharp script, uh, we named it landmine. Um, so everything in the script is part of a class. Notice this class is also named landmine. So the class name has to match the script name. Um, that's just something with C-sharp. That's the way that it works. Um, so now let's go ahead and start writing our code. Uh, so we are using a trigger, so the function that we're going to use is void on trigger enter. And then uh, what we're using for our trigger is a collider, so we'll type in collider as the type. And then we're going to name this, uh, we can name it whatever we want. Um, I'm just going to do col. Um, so void on trigger enter. So so if we run into a game object that has a trigger and it, it's holding the script, it's going to execute this line of code. Uh, and that's basically what on trigger enter does. Um, so what we want to do is we let's just set up a debug log and see what this looks like right now. Um, essentially what this uh, portion of code is going to be doing is uh, running our explosion sequence. So we'll just say start the explosion. Uh, 
All right, so we have our script. Uh, we don't have a uh, explosion prefab yet. We'll do that in just a minute. Uh, let's just make sure and see that when our car drives over this object, it does indeed uh, give us our debug log and it says start explosion. So we have everything set up so that we can actually start our explosion when the car drives over the mine. Um, let's go ahead and massage this a little bit because what's going to need to happen is um, if you have a lot of objects that are moving around in your scene um, or physics based objects, let's say you toss something into this collider, um, you don't want it to trigger the explosion unless it's the car. So one of the things that we can do is we can say if and uh, well, so let, let me just go ahead and put this in here. Let's say um, collide dot tag is equal to player. So uh, the collider that we're looking for is what we're actually checking here. Um, we're going to check the tag and the collider's tag has to be equal to player for us to actually run the explosion. So let's go ahead and save this and see what our error is. Double equals um, for that. So now when we go ahead and run over this, um, it probably won't trigger because our collider's not set. So you see it doesn't trigger. What we have to do here is the colliders for the car, if we look at those, all three of them are set as untagged. So let's go ahead and kind of look at this a little bit. Um, we want to change one of these colliders. Let me go ahead and stop this actually. Um, we want to change one of these colliders to have the tag of player. We don't want all three of them to necessarily have it. Um, if we do, we're going to have to find a way to manage that in our script so that it doesn't trigger twice or three times since there's three colliders. Um, so I'm just going to set this one bottom collider uh, to be tagged player. So now when we press play and we drive over this landmine again, we're actually going to get our log um, because it was indeed a player's tag that collided with this object. So now we can go ahead and we can um, start putting some more stuff into this. Uh, let's actually go ahead and bring our explosion in. So if we look in our sample assets folder, uh, we go to effects and particle systems and prefabs. Uh, we have this explosion prefab. Let's go ahead and just attach it to our landmine. And just make sure it's centered at zero zero zero. And now when we press play, we can see what this explosion looks like. So what we want to do here is we want to actually not have it explode when we press play. So we're going to disable this object in the hierarchy. Go ahead and press play. And now it doesn't explode. Um, so what we're going to do in our script is we want to trigger this explosion. So let's go ahead and we we created a variable for the explosion prefab. Um, let's go ahead and just drag that into our script. And now what we want to do is we'll say um, explosion prefab dot set active, and that's going to be the true. So set active, you could either do true or false. If you want to disable something, you could do set active uh, false. Uh, in this case, we're enabling something, so we're doing set active as true. Uh, go ahead and save that. And then now what we'll see when we drive over this is that our explosion will trigger. And we still have our box, so we got to get rid of that. It's not being deleted. Uh, so everything's working right now. So what we want to do also is we'll say render dot enabled. Let's just disable the mesh render for this game object. Um, enabled is equal to false. 
so now what our code says is I'm trigger if the colliders tag is a player um, we're gonna send this debug that we're gonna try to start this explosion we're gonna disable the mesh render for our cube object or our landmine and then we're gonna turn on our explosion so let's go ahead and save this and see what it looks like go ahead and press play and now when we drive over this our explosion should trigger our landmine is not visible anymore to the player um, but it's still in our hierarchy so we want to destroy it so what we can do is let's say um, we, we want to create another function so we'll call this destroy landmine um, and this is going to be where we actually just destroy the game object destroy uh, game object so now if we save this and we look at it um, actually we need we also need to call on this destroy um, landmine so we will do what we're going to use for this is we're going to use an invoke um, an invoke basically says call this function that I'm going to say um, in the time that I specify so let's go ahead and see what that looks like we we do invoke and the name of the function that we're calling is our destroy landmine because we want to destroy the, the landmine and we want to do it uh, let's say after about two seconds so let's go ahead and save this and we should be pretty much done So now when we go ahead and we drive over this landmine, causes the explosion, and then two seconds later it destroys itself. So the landmine is now completely gone, um, and we just built a landmine. So let me go ahead and bring up this script so you guys can see it again. Um, essentially this is all we're doing to create a landmine. Um, if you want to go ahead and copy this down, make sure you have everything right. I'll leave it up here for a moment. You could pause the screen if you want. Um, but yeah, this is how you build uh, collisions and triggers and set up different events for different things to happen. Um, and what you can also do is now you can go ahead and you could save this landmine as a prefab. And then you can use it in other places. So for our effects and our particle systems, we can go ahead and bring our landmine in here and this landmine is using our explosion so now we have a new uh, a new prefab to play with um, so I hope this video was useful for you guys um, if you have any questions go ahead and post them in the video uh, comments um, if you have requests for different types of uh, scripts that you were thinking of that you want to make something work and you just you're missing part of it let me know and I'll try to do a video. and I just want to drive over this landmine one more time. Uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. Alright, so yeah, I might have to put that in one of my games somewhere. <laughs> um, so thanks for requesting this video, John. I hope you like it, and I uh, hope it works the way you want it to work. And we will see you guys in one of the next videos.